Good day folks and welcome to a new Ironman 4x4 Africa workshop video. In the description below you'll find a link to a recent video we did regarding pangolin conservation. It featured a guy called Kudu Meyer, who operates in the Limpopo region and he tracks and monitors pangolins in that region. He works for the African Pangolin Working Group. After we featured this video on our channel, the African Pangolin Working Group reached out to us for some assistance on one of their latest vehicle acquisitions. They have a canine unit with a guy by the name of Glenn Thompson who actually does the training of the dogs. He's just acquired a brand new Hilux and they've asked us for some assistance with equipment on the vehicle. So what we'll be doing to this Hilux is we'll be fitting some vehicle protection, which is front uh, replacement bull bar, rear replacement bumper, some side steps. What we'll also be doing is fitting some spotlights because these vehicles operate a lot of the time after dark in rural areas or out in the bush. And last but not least, we'll be fitting a full Ironman 4x4 suspension upgrade just to make the ride through these rough conditions better and carry some additional load as well. Now as a four-wheel drive company, we are not only passionate about four-wheel driving, we are very passionate about the environment, we're very passionate about the fauna and flora in that environment. We really look forward to this partnership with the African Pangolin Working Group and without further ado, let's see how this build turns out. My name is Glenn Thompson. I've been working for the African Pangolin Working Group for the last two years. The African Pangolin Working Group is involved with the rescue and rehabilitation and release of the pangolins as well as scientific research on habitats and uh, further research into the anatomy of pangolin. My specific role in the African Pangolin Working Group is working with the police on uh, police uh, sanctioned sting operations as well as transporting the pangolin from sting operations to the rehabilitation site. And once the pangolin has gone through the rehabilitation process and is ready for the rewilding, I'm most involved with transporting the pangolin to the rewilding site where it would be released and monitored for up to a year of the release. Um, with the vehicle, you know, especially when it comes to the rewilding of a pangolin, you know, we've got so many different terrains from Zululand down in Pazulu Natal up to Messina, so there's a wide variety of regions where we have to travel. 
we travel through some riverbeds sometimes because we need to find a specific area for pangolin. So it's not always easy to get to an area where pangolin is comfortable to find the right food sources for a pangolin. So that we do do a lot of off-roading with the vehicle um, and as well as, you know, chasing down suspect vehicles. So, uh, so the bumper bars to knock their vehicles out. <laughs> Um, and with this vehicle as well, it's the first in the country and in the world that I know of that is specifically designed to transport pangolin and the canine uh, units. We are calling it the first pangolin ambulance and response vehicle. The canopy of the vehicle is going to have air condition in it, so we can actually regulate the temperature to the backboard when we're transporting pangolin. Because the most ideal temperature when you're transporting pangolin is to keep the temperature at about 23 degrees. So with all the long distance driving and that, sometimes the temperature in the back of the canopy can reach up to about 43 degrees. So this vehicle is purely designed for pangolin transport and recoveries. Um, at the moment, the pangolin is the most trafficked mammal in the world. Um, if we just go on the stats from uh, pre-COVID with the interceptions of pangolin scales uh, worldwide, I think it was 91 tons of pangolin scales that were confiscated leaving the African continent. So there you're looking at close to maybe a million animals uh, in that 92 tons. And if you work out, a lot of people talk about you lose one rhino every eight hours. With pangolin on the African continent, we're losing one every five minutes. So that is the extent of the pangolin poaching. The poaching in Africa was never that bad until a couple of years ago when the Chinese came into Africa because they poached their animals to extinction. They came into Western Central Africa and they saw all the pangolin scales used to be discarded because there was only the bushmeat trade. So now with the Chinese and Asian coming into Africa, they've now created a demand in Africa for the pangolin scales where you now get your hunters and herders going out and specifically looking for pangolin for their scales for the sale to the Asian markets. We are very lucky that, you know, about 80 to 90% of our information is information that comes from public. Once we have established contact with the suspects, we will actually uh, approach the police, say we've got this information, they've got a pangolin, they've sent us video footage or photos of the pangolin. Then we apply for what they call a 252A operation, which gives us the legal authority to do a sting operation entrapment um, to actually catch these guys trying to sell the pangolin. And we always work with uh, the various stock theft units throughout um, South Africa. Um, we're also working now with Ironman, um, with doing a, a video a conservation series that Ironman is doing. They also have helped one of our researchers up in Messina, who's responsible for actually going out and monitoring all the vehicles, and also um, helping us with upgrading our new vehicle for sting operations and um, transporting of the pangolin. Oh, I, I love the car, it's looking good. <laughs> I'm sure the board is going to be extremely happy and especially Ray, because Ray is going to be seeing the car tomorrow.